Hello and welcome to the Life After Diets podcast. I'm Sarah Dosange, psychotherapist and author of the book, I Can't Stop Eating. And I'm Stephanie Michelle, binge recovery health coach. If you feel out of control around food, we get it because we've been there. Thank you for joining our conversations about how to make peace with food and feel more comfortable in our bodies. Now on to this week's episode. Hi, Sarah. Hey, Steph. How are you doing? Um, I'm, I'm okay. Pretty good. I'm actually feeling a little bit nervous about yeah. mm-hmm, this mm-hmm. one. I thought it would be easy because I have done something similar before on my YouTube channel. I did read out extracts from my journals. And I know we spoke about this a little bit earlier, but when I was going through them last night and trying to figure out what I wanted to bring today, it was stirring, I think. That's probably an understatement. <laughs> yeah, I had the same experience, but admittedly, some of the entries I brought, I have not looked at in years. Some of the other ones I brought, I'm more familiar with. I'm less worried about those, but these from my college years, whoa. Yeah. And so the the format of this episode is going to be us sharing excerpts from our journals and responding to each other and maybe just talking about what it means and how it feels to look back I'm also hoping it will resonate with people as well to see where we were. There might be people who are there now. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we may need to insert some trigger warnings. So just in terms of triggers, I said something that I'm going to be talking about and mentioning is fasting. And also I'm going to talk a bit about my time in OA and that idea of demonizing sugar and sugar addiction. And anything for you, Steph? Definitely some fat phobic comments about the the desire to lose weight and being skinny. And I also mentioned a couple of food amounts. So if anyone listening thinks it might be a bit difficult to listen to some of those subjects, you might want to skip this episode. Well, let me ask you then, how did you decide which entries to bring? I might be wrong, but I imagine that you have a lot because you strike me as somebody who journals consistently or at least did. I did. Um, I have this. Let me show you here. If Well, this is, I know it's a podcast, but some people watch on YouTube. I have these two inch binder things for each year of my life. (laughs) Um, So I've condensed them all into the ones I wanted to bring up. But yeah, I'm pretty, um, I'm a pretty voracious writer. Um, And how did I choose the ones? So to be honest, there's so many. I couldn't possibly have read them all to go through, but I did pick ones that felt like these are repeating themes in my journal entries, and this is the epitome of what it felt like. And I also chose ones that I don't have too much um, extra, like like the story about my best friend and the story about my dad. I'm, you know, I need to leave some personal material out, so some of it just captured it in the right way. I've got this poetry in here too, which I didn't want to burden you with, but. Yeah, I tried to stick to the things that felt like that's that's about it. That's how that time felt in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. Maybe we could end on one of your poems. Would you be up for that? Oh my gosh, I don't have, I mean, I would have to then go searching through them. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. Um, okay. But maybe but- there was actually one that I was like, Steph, that was not bad. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see. We'll see where we go. Yeah. So many times I made that commitment, that decision that I was going to journal regularly and then didn't. So I just ended up with shelves of books that I'd started and written a few pages in and the rest was blank. And we were talking about this in one of my workshops because a lot of people could relate to the same thing and maybe people listening can as well. You know, when you, well, you don't know Steph because you're a voracious journaler, but for those of us who want to journal and are not very consistent, we just think that we need the right journal that will make us become journalists and so I did that a lot and I would really love to show you this particular journal again maybe we could put a photograph of it on the Instagram thing because it is something to behold is that is that that all pages yes wow so this (laughs) that's like expectation do you want to describe to the listeners that looks like a bible looking at it. exactly <laughs> exactly because it's even got the gilded edges isn't it? yes it looks like a it's even bigger than a bible and if yeah, i that's a lot of that's like a lifetime journal <laughs> well it's funny that you say that Steph, because it's called my life story a diary oh. for your whole life a lifetime of memories it is a 100 year 
diary. So it's probably like uh, over a thousand pages. Do you want to know how many pages I did? Four. Oh, a bit more credit, 12. <laughs> <laughs> but I have another one that I did four in and another notebook. But this one, yes. <laughs> well, because you look at that and you're like, oh, I can't, I can't win. When I saw it in the shop, I looked at it and I thought, oh, this is going to be what's going to save me. I mm-hmm. just need to document my whole life. And then I'll have this wonderful recovery journey um, that's ready to become a book. Oh, well, you know, the thing about that, but it's not spiral. I can't write in a non-spiral bound anything because I need to be able to flip it. Like it bothers me to be pressing pages and trying to get my arm around. But, um, but no, you know, I'm, I don't consider myself a voracious journaler though, either. It's just that I just used to open my computer and Word documents or email to myself and start writing because I, I I write the way I talk. Like I just can't stop. So it wasn't like I set out to journal. I feel like that's a different endeavor than like dumping it out all on the page just to get it out for your own sanity. Maybe that's not. <laughs> what am I talking about? Um, well, it is something to do with just the way you're framing it, isn't it? Um, hmm. I, I almost feel like we're procrastinating over okay, starting fine. this. Do you feel that? I mean, no, I, I'm not. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Read. I'm feeling it. No, that wasn't, or do you want me to me. read first? No, I was just, <laughs> just saying <laughs> I want to carry on procrastinating for a little bit. <laughs> Toss a coin. Yeah. Do you have one? No. Oh. It keeps the suspense going for podcasts like podcast entertainment. All right. I'll flip this. I have, I'll write an S on one side and an S on the other. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's S, you go first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, no. Here, I'll write it. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Came up Steph. Steph. Okay. All right. So I have a set of journal entries from my college years here. And I also have a set from my 30s. I don't have much recorded in between, really, at least that I could pull out of my attic. So they're different in that my in my 30s, I was physically restricting and binging. Um, Not to say that I was in any kind of caloric deficit overall, but I was having an active restriction. And in college, I was binging pretty much every single day. There was no physical restriction that I could actually get to. I wanted to, and there's evidence here of mental restriction, but I couldn't actually do that as hard as I tried. And depression ruled in my college years, whereas anxiety ruled in my 30s, just as, as some background. Gosh. Okay. I'm just going to read this one. This is from October 28th, 1997. Why not just give up right here and go into hibernation? Just admit that it's not working and everything repeats itself. And I feel like a loser. This isn't me. I wish food didn't exist. Really, I do. My stomach is so full. It feels like the food is pressing against the inside of my big round belly. What's going to happen to me? Stop venting because it just helps for the moment, but then you binge the next day anyway. Sometimes I think of coming on here and writing about this, but I never do because I would just rather go and eat. And I know that writing might lessen the urge. All I have to do is stop eating. All I have to do is just not. I can do that physically. It's not like it's something out of my control, although it is. What can I do? Chain myself to the bed? I'd probably still find some way of eating. I've tried every single diet and technique to get skinny again, even eating normally, and nothing has worked. Even incentives don't work. Maybe I should just try harder. How do you feel reading that? Um, well, actually, that wasn't as bad as it was when I first read it in, in my head because then I've got all these other surrounding things. But, um, well, it's just that I, it's like I beg to differ, Steph. <laughs> you know, like I, it's, I could, I remember feeling like this was all true. I just remember feeling like uh, believing all these things, whereas now my perspective is so different that it's kind of to me like, well, of course, you're not going to get out of this if you do it this way. But the one part that um, that I really resonate still with is this idea of stop venting because it just helps. And then you do it again the next day anyway, like that. I remember that helplessness of feeling like, why bother doing anything? Like, why bother trying at all? Because every day is the same. Every day is the same. And all these, like, I felt like I was just this ignorant little hamster spinning in a wheel, thinking I was getting somewhere and never really was. And I I remember that. And I remember writing this and feeling like that. I remember being like, what is this for? You know? Yeah. And that stop venting to me sounded like 
just shut up and stop doing it already. Yeah, you know, I did feel like that. Yeah, less talky talky, more <laughs> stoppy stoppy eating. Yeah, exactly. Can I just read one more that is in that same vein in that same time period? Please do, yeah. Okay. All right. This one's February 10th. So it was several months later in 98. So I hate myself again today. I'm in another downward spiral. What the hell is going on? I can't help but feel this way, feel guilty and terrible and hopeless and ugly. I wake up every morning and I'm tempted. I make the decision to eat or not to eat. Some days are harder than others. And lately things have been better, but now they seem right back to where they were. One step forward, two steps back. The bottom line is that you end up going backwards, worse off. My eyes are tired. My brain doesn't work. I'm a mess inside, more or less, depending on when you talk to me. I can't write anymore and wallow. I can't listen to myself repeat the sorrows mentioned a hundred times above or make promises I can't keep. I can't do it anymore. I don't want to. I want it to just go away. Too bad I need to eat. It's like an addiction. And I can't forget that feeling and make it go away. It haunts me. It doesn't go away. I can't get out. I hate things. I'm lonely here. Fuck it all. I want to be numb, to not feel and just move through life because this way is hell. It always comes out of nowhere too. I wish that I could enjoy everything and live, really live, because now I'm just existing in a miserable state and I can't stand the roller coaster of a ride this all is. I just want to stop and smell some flowers. But I couldn't because I'd be thinking about the lucky charms and frozen yogurt waiting for me at home. I'm blocked. I'm trapped. I want to go where people are and where I belong. I remember being like drunk on food at that time. Like I, I remember feeling like I was almost disoriented with, with the binge. Yeah. Where people are and where I belong. Yeah. Right. Like just, that was random. Yeah. But not. I suppose because I thinking after a binge, the last thing I wanted to be was anywhere near people. You know, just wanted to. Yeah. But I think that at the core of my binge eating was a feeling of loneliness and um, lack of connection. And mm -hmm. I craved that so much. And so to me, that was the root of, of it. And so I think when I would binge, all of that would rise to the surface and I would start to feel that loneliness. And that's where those words would come from. Interesting that you mentioned only that came up quite a few times in mine as well. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to start with this, <laughs> this nice, pretty blue and silver notebook, which I have written four pages in. Do you want to see what I call this? I was right about the four. I fast journal hmm. yes because i thought of course the solution was to fast oh like fasting yes <laughs> <Got> <laughs> i thought you meant like rapid writing journal <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. for the longest time i thought that that was what i needed to do was to fast particularly in those early years maybe the first five years or so was really about trying to do that because i just thought if i could just do a long fast i would loose weight my body would be the size I wanted it to be and it would somehow reset my relationship mm. with food so this is Monday the 23rd of March 2009 okay so was fasting even yet in the conversation as, as much as it is now well, like I was watching YouTube videos on it okay I don't I, I wasn't okay. on social well I wasn't really on social media I mean Instagram didn't even exist then so I don't know how I originally came across it to be honest I don't remember hmm but somehow okay. it came across my radar. And so I was watching all these videos of people's experiences of fasting. Okay. Day one, this is day one of my fast, 9.30 a.m. First morning of fast, feel excited and a bit scared. If all goes to plan, this will be the first day of a 40 day fast. Yes. I'm fed up of all the anxiety I have around food. I've done my research and it sounds perfectly safe. <laughs> Sorry. The body is designed to handle long periods without food and can adapt accordingly. Perhaps it's riskier for me as a bulimic. After all, I don't want to become anorexic. If I succeed, it will be the longest period I've not binged for since I was afflicted. I'm hoping to detox my body, soul and mind and cleanse out bad habits. My reasons I will list to refresh myself in any moment of weakness. Number one, detox my body. Number two, heal my bulimia. Number three, weight loss. Number four, to feel in control. And number five, to experience the nirvana believed to take place around day 11. That must have been something that I'd seen on YouTube, no doubt. Yeah, oh no, I hear that. And I've heard mm. people describe it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
It's only the first morning. I over ate yesterday and I've been fasting for around 12 hours, only 39 days and 12 hours to go. I need to do my research into whether I should be exercising or not. Today will be a water fast, but I shall introduce juices soon. Alcohol will have to be a no-no as drinking on an empty stomach can be lethal. I do not want to be a slave to food anymore. My next entry in this journal, so that one was Monday the 23rd of March 2009. The next one is Sunday the 21st of March 2010. How'd it go? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're about to find out. 2.20 a.m. Wow, I cannot believe that last entry was almost exactly a year ago. So much has happened since then, yet I'm still a slave to food. It defines me. It consumes my thoughts and has stolen my identity. I don't know who I am anymore. In the last year, I've been diagnosed with a pituitary hypothalamic tumor, which I believe triggered my eating chaos. However, after two and a half years, and then in brackets, I'll change the word, crap, has it really been that long, of eating chaotically and of being so distressed and overwhelmed by it, it is inevitable that there are now psychological factors involved. And obviously the weight gain is distressing. The question is, where does the physiological stop and the psychological start? How come I can feel so well and normal for up to a month, but inevitably crash headlong into a very dark and difficult spell? It's very dark at the moment. I am well aware that I am depressed. I do not wish to be alone, yet I loathe company. I'm not sleeping, and this is new. I've always slept well. I want to get away. I'm in a mind to book a cabin in the forest this week and just go there Monday to Friday and be totally alone. Did you ever do that, by the way? I think you mentioned this, didn't you? Kind of in the other episode that to. we did. I never did. I was did. just thinking that that would, yeah. but thinking that that would be a solution. So yeah. if I could just get away. Clean sleep. It, yeah. 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 I've also decided to fast, hence picking up this journal. As to the entry last year, I did not fast for 40 days. I think I did three, followed by a 10 day fast in May. But the backlash after this fast was so horrific that I haven't fasted since, but I'm so tired and have eaten and eaten for the past month that I just can't bear it anymore. I'm exhausted from fighting the urge to eat all the time. I don't understand and I don't know what to do anymore. I feel broken and lost and I don't recognize myself anymore. I just want my life back. It really doesn't seem so much to ask. Mm. I'd forgotten that. Like when I picked this mm. up again last night, I'd forgotten. You know, because I always go, I didn't really restrict. I wasn't doing any restrictions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, That's because um, you wouldn't have called it that then. So you don't remember no. it as being that. Yeah. And also because I think I didn't, I didn't try to fast again. I did those first few years and then I just thought I can't do this. So even though I was struggling for quite a few more years after that, I wasn't actually trying to fast at that time. So I thought there can't be any restriction around. What do you like? Do you feel compelled to say to talk to that version of yourself or do you just feel compassion or like what comes up the first thing that came when you said do you feel compelled to talk to that version of yourself I thought she wouldn't listen <laughs> yeah <laughs> could, well, true I could try but she wouldn't listen <laughs> do I feel compassion yes of course yeah I don't know not necessarily of course but yes I do and I feel sadness because I remember how lost and how distressed and I think when you read your own words back to you it's very different from just holding the memory that, yes, I went through this and it was pretty horrible when I went through it. When you hear those mm. words that were written in that moment, yeah, it feels quite stirring. What strikes me about yours is that I don't hear, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't hear the critic, like the disdain for yourself, just that you're going through it. Like, like this is a thing that I can't stand, I want better for myself. And that just feels really, it has a completely different feel for me than, than mine, mm. because I felt like you're actually on your team trying to figure something out that supports you. Like you even said, I don't want to be anorexic. That's not what I'm trying to do. Whereas my, in mine, I would be like, you, you starve and you do it and you do it right. I, I would have welcomed being sicker, but just as long as it made me thinner, you know, like mm. there was no compassion. Uh, there was no allyship. I feel that I hear in yours. Yeah, I think that's true. And I think when I, I would just go to places of despair, mm. but it wasn't, it wasn't hatred. Yeah. 
it didn't have that fiery feeling to hatred. It just felt like collapse and defeat. And so I would feel defeated and in despair. And then I would gather some energy and I would get into this very sort of excited, I can do this kind of place. And I swung like my, <laughs> it's one of the things that I was gonna comment on with some of my other entries. I go from like cloud nine, I've got this to, oh my goodness, what on earth made me ever think that I did have it. Yeah. And that swing is so big. and. I still go up and down, but it's smaller now yeah. compared to how extreme it used to be. I used to think the goal was just to level. be consistent and level and yeah. always thinking and feeling and believing the same thing about myself, which of course mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. not the case. I, I resonate with that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah, interesting. More distinctions between us. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a series of three days that I have some excerpts from. So on September 11th, 98. I'm starting Atkins tomorrow. It's so interesting that I was going to start tomorrow. Like not now because you have to prep for that, but tomorrow. I'm going to start babysitting next week and it will become routine and I will have to fight in order to keep with my diet. I wish things would change. I wish I could shut up. I'm tired and this is the next day. I can't really write. I'm tired and sick and hopeless. I don't care about writing in here. It's all for nothing anyway. Tomorrow I have to go babysit, and I'm afraid I'll eat their food because eating is the one single thing that makes me happy, but it only lasts for the time I'm doing it, and then I'm miserable again. I'm actually perpetuating my misery by enjoying 20 minutes of life. I can't do that. I have to remember that I'm trying to get through the short term without breaking down into a depression. I need to think in the long term. I need to realize that I'm not escaping anything by eating. I'm digging myself deeper into this hole. And the sooner I stop eating, the sooner my, my depression will fade and I won't need to escape anyway. The next day, it's no use to sit here and type about how much I don't want to eat. When I'm in the moment, I don't give a crap about how easy it is or how long term I should be thinking or how much I want it. I only care about eating. I don't know how to get out of that. And I see that I didn't need to be eating yesterday. I realize how dumb it was to do it. And that makes me realize that every day is like that. I just don't know what else to redirect my pain towards. I don't know. I feel so out of control. Yep. This entire binder is just like that. It's it's just that. It was that just for years, years of that. And I would try Atkin. I tried Atkin so many times. Oh, me too. I would try, yeah. I went on every, and it would just always, this was essentially, I mean, I could read these entries and you pretty much have the gist of this entire two inch notebook times four, you know, of, of my college years. Well, not all of them, but that was how my, my twenties looked over and over, you know? Do you feel like you have grieved for that lost time? I haven't done anything formally and hmm. properly, but I have talked about that at length in therapy. Yeah. I was angry at myself for a really long time for, for that, for hmm. wasting time. I was angry about that before I recovered, like, especially, you know, without understanding, because I had a different perspective on it than I do now. I mean, I, I can understand now how there's no way I was getting out of that. I didn't have the tools mm -hmm. but earlier, you know, previously I thought I did have the tools. I was just too weak to use them. That's what I believe for most of the time. So I was angry. Now I just feel like it's more of like a loss, but at the same time, here I am reading these and it wasn't for nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, there's, there's grief. Yeah. Do you still feel critical towards her 20 year old you? No, I think she was in a lot of pain. I think she, she had no idea. I feel like she thought she knew everything. And I, I really feel a lot more compassion for her now than I ever have um, in my life because I understand things. So I, I have compassion for that. But there's times I read things though. And I'm like, oh, you, <laughs> yeah, I guess I have some criticism sometimes, but <laughs> not to the degree that she did. Mm -hmm. So I found a bit of journaling around my OA days. Mm. So I thought I might read a bit from that. And there's a name of somebody from OA who I was friends with at the time. So I'm going to change her name to Falula. Yeah. Okay. So this is Sunday, the 7th of April, 2013. Uh, went back to OA tonight. Went round for Lula's for tea beforehand. I need to give up my trigger foods and Falula has advised me to physically write them down. It helps to identify and compartmentalize the foods. So here it goes. Chocolate cakes, desserts and puddings, 
biscuits, sweet cereals and granola and jam. It all comes down to one thing really, sugar. One day at a time, just for tomorrow, I will abstain from sugar. One day at a time. <laughs> one day at a time. The next entry being on the 12th of April, which was five days later. I don't go into detail. I just put that I had a tough week, really struggled with abstinence. So I'm guessing that I wasn't able to stick mm. to it. But then on the 21st of May, I said, it's been over a month since I've written. I've been struggling with my eating and started a 12 step big book study. So I went to one of these 12 week groups where you actually worked through the big book chapter by chapter. Both weeks I went seemed to increase my eating disturbances. Well, I didn't see the connection. <laughs> yeah, I, that's full yeah. of mine too. It's like, I can't understand this. I'm yeah. just I, have to starve for 40 days and I don't understand <laughs> what's going on. Yeah, last time I fasted. fasted. <laughs> last time I fasted. <laughs> last time I fasted, my eating was absolutely crazy, but it's okay. I'm going to get it right this time. <laughs> yeah, well, that that speaks to the like fasting and dieting and restricting was supposed to be good for us you know like yeah. I think that is really just why it feels so right yeah. we don't question that yeah and something that I really see in hindsight that I did not see at all at the time was how hard I was trying like I really felt like I wasn't trying <laughs> and oh, I read... it was a full-time job I feel like just figuring it out and I know planning. right and then... so that was in May and then at the end of August, this will just sort of show you the swing, I think, mm, between yeah. two days. So it's consecutive entries, but this first one is Tuesday, the 27th of August. The summer seems to have gone, and I feel like I never really noticed it. It has been swallowed up by obsessive food thoughts and numbing out. The food takes up so much headspace. I hate it, and I feel miserable. But yet, if it were all taken away tomorrow, what would be left? I don't know who I am anymore. And more frustratingly, I find it hard to picture who I am trying to be. Sometimes I get glimpses of her, but then I lose her and the obsessive addicted thoughts take over. I feel like I've tried so many things and they usually work for a while until I fall back again. So I feel like it's just me failing again. I keep searching. I have to. I would fall into a very deep, dark place if I gave up. It just seems laughable. Absolutely ridiculous. I can't feed myself one of the most basic of human functions and I don't know how to do it. Nothing feels right. I wish I didn't have to eat. I wish I didn't think this way. I wish I knew what to do. And then I put um, a quote in um, and the quote is because this was when I just started training to be a therapist. So I would have been in my first year. And I put a quote that my tutor used to say a lot and the quote is, but we're the naked man who offers you his shirt. <laughs> and it's this whole thing. If you don't sort yourself out, how yeah. on earth are you going to help yeah. anybody else? And then I put, how can I effectively help others when I cannot help myself? Mm. What can I do to help myself? And then the following day on Wednesday, I write, right now I feel kind of invincible. I feel like I can do anything I put my mind to. I have so much to be thankful for. Yes, I've had a lot of crap happen in the last six years, but I have a choice what I focus on. I'm going to make joyful decisions about my health. I believe with the right nutrition and by looking after myself, my back will heal and I can reconnect with this body that serves me and does its best for me. And then on Friday, two days later, and crashing back to reality, I messed up again. My back hurts and I'm tired and depressed. I just ache all over, I'm feeling sad. So I will listen to some motivational audio to perk me up. Maybe some Anthony Robbins or something. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I wish I could get my head together, but I can't seem to think clearly when I'm eating this food. And I can't seem to make better food choices unless I can think clearly, what am I to do? And then underneath, and this too shall pass. Mm. You're very supportive to yourself. I like, it's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was really into it this time. I was really into the whole... Uh, law of attraction and yeah. manifestation kind of thing so I kept trying to come back to that place because it seemed to work for me for a, a couple of weeks and then I would crash mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I'd be stuck down there for a bit and then I would claw myself up yeah. again I have like similar in the vein of one day looks like 
okay, I, I figured this out. I think I figured this out, or this is working for me. I'm doing well with this. I have all this hope. And then it's like, Blah. you know, the up and down of that, that, which is why I think this, the roller coaster, it's the roller coaster ride that this, that this disorder can be or is. Um, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. And I think that illustrates it nicely. Mm -hmm. It also, I have ones later from my 30s where I was, I mean, obviously it evolved a bit more from my days that I, you know, that I just read previously, but, you know, I had the, I had read at this time, I was influenced by Catherine Hansen of Brain Over Binge. So the idea of neurological junk, and I took her course and I was using that. So these are from 2016 and I had written AM binge urges, so morning binge urges. I've been able to control these. Mornings are always easier for me, but at my parents' house, I have woken up several mornings in a row with binge urges. I don't know why I was there. I have not acted on them. The separation of urge from actual binge is key. I can have an urge and not act on it. I have basically been able to separate myself from the urge, saying, I feel this urge, but I know I ate breakfast and it is a false urge. If I can practice this at lunch and dinner, I can get better. Evening binges. Nights are the hardest, particularly after dinner. I have been able to have a snack after dinner and call it quits. For example, last night I had enough calories and wanted to binge, 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 but I was able to have a normal person portion of ice cream, a half cup, with nuts and a few chocolate chips, and felt satisfied slash finished afterwards. I did not feel I needed to keep going. That is maybe the biggest accomplishment. This comes from feeling not deprived, allowing my snack to happen. Dealing with the urge reaction versus the trigger. The trigger itself doesn't matter as much as how I handle the subsequent urge. I'm trying to think of it like a yappy dog, neurological junk, noise that is purely habitual and that can learn to be ignored. The more I ignore, this junk is true for all negative patterns, like negative self-talk and anxiety too. The more my brain will get quiet and not revert to it. So this was like largely based on that habit theory and... Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, it was useful to a degree until a couple of days later, I, I had written, I have had my first major, major, major binge in weeks. It feels different from a setback. It was an all out, I cannot stop, frenzied, urgent, panicky binge that lasted for hours and I could not stop. I could not even begin to stop. I had full awareness the whole time and I spoke to myself out loud and everything. At one point I actually said, I am choosing to do this. The thought of stopping, it was like there was no choice, only frenzy. I am finding it very difficult to not look at this as a total failure, like I haven't really learned anything. I feel like all of the progress was washed away because I am obviously completely out of touch with whatever triggered me to do this. At first, I thought it was hormonally driven because it started two days ago with an insatiable hunger, just a bottomless pit. But it also coincided with a visit to my parents' house. <laughs> it brought up feelings of insecurity, anger, frustration, and feeling like I'm floundering with no anchor. How do I feel, deal with the self-hate? I do not forgive myself. It's not that I don't forgive. It's just that I can't accept that there are times when I am hijacked, completely overtaken. I cannot deal with that. It's not fair. I don't think it will ever go away. When you look at that binge now, that major, major, major binge, is that what you called it? Apparently. <laughs> to differentiate from a major, major one. Of course, of course. Now, what do you think the triggers were? Well, I know I... I was doing the neurological junk thing. I was resisting urges. And I think those urges, because what I'm not writing here is that I was making up for calories. I had calorie caps and I was resisting urges that I was, I know I was able to sort of white knuckle it in the morning. And then I was, you know, the evening it was compounding and I was fighting that and you can for a little bit, or I could at that time for a little bit. And it was building and it was restriction that I didn't recognize was going on as restriction. And there it goes. And it, that's the hijacking. That's that. That's the difference between a non-restriction based binge and a restriction based binge. It's, it, it is, it is, it overtakes you. It is not something you can even begin to think about stopping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've got one that's on a similar vein. When you look back at it, you're like, oh, well, like I can see now what that was. <laughs> so this is just a bit of scrap paper or a few bits of paper at a time when I was um, not putting stuff in notebooks. And this would have been I haven't put the year on this, but I know where I was. So this would have been 2014, Sunday, the 13th of April, 2014. So 9, 9.50 a.m. 
Woke up at 8.40 and spent 40 minutes trying to get on a spin class, but there are no spaces. Feeling very low. Sun is shining outside, so best thing would be to get up and go out. But I feel miserable and have no energy. I don't know what to do with myself. It's early and I could turn this day into a good productive day, but I feel thoroughly depressed and fed up. Physically, I ache and my lower back hurts. Then 1.15 p.m. Still in bed. Slept from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Everything feels like too much effort. Getting up, showering, deciding what to do with my day. 2.30. I got up and showered and put some washing on. The tension has been building. A battle raging between wanting to overeat and knowing I will feel worse and full of guilt and regret. I have to shut it up and the only way that seems to work is to eat. Because after there is no argument left to have, it's too late. If I don't give in, the conflict continues. 18.20. I ate a tub of Ben and Jerry's, a large bag of sweet and salty popcorn and about eight biscuits while watching Suits. I felt calmer and energized and booked onto a 5 p.m. spin class. Suddenly my thinking seems clearer. I feel optimistic and everything is okay again. <laughs> Looking back at how I felt earlier today, I'm amazed at the extremes of my mood. <laughs> I, I ate something and <laughs> I felt better. <laughs> Where's this energy come from? I can't possibly I'm, figure this out. I can't out. think clearly. <laughs> hey, yay, yay. Oh. Well, that was a fun trip down memory lane. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else you wanted to, any yeah. other bits that you wanted to share at all? No, no. There's too much here that, yeah. I hope that's helpful. You know, like I hope just hearing it, whether it's about resonance or company, <laughs> Um, normalizing or even being able to see maybe in yourself like okay I do that maybe that's why you know because I certainly didn't understand why the binges were happening but now I can see reading them but yeah thanks for sharing with me too yeah so are you gonna see us out with a poem oh my gosh I don't think so <laughs> they're so they're so they're so low, Sarah. I feel like I don't know that like that is the best way. I wish that I had written a poem in you know as I was recovering. I actually that's the one place where I didn't record anything. It's all memory that I go on for that. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna read this. Just please know this was the same journal entry where I'm drunk on food. And we've talked about that feeling. Like I remember feeling like I couldn't even I was dizzy from so much food. And I had just finished a bag of white chocolate covered pretzels to the degree that I was eating them. And I'm writing here how sick and just like how disgusting they tasted. And I'm like, hold on, let me go dump these out the window. Okay. I've done it. <laughs> I mean, like, I was like, I just need these out because I couldn't stop eating them otherwise. And I, they were making me sick and I just couldn't stop. So I was like drunk on those. And I write existing in this space where people float around me like secret characters equipped with personal lives. I wait for what? For Prince Charming? For youth? By the way, I was 19. For a fairy tale to carry me off into the great world of hope? The ground beneath, adorned in green, of dancing flowers and hopes I've seen, waits below for me to land, to carry out the dreams I'd planned. Arms outstretched in mounds of grass, it watches me as I blow past, and hover where it calls to me, I halt before prosperity. Sailing past on seas of air, I brush the tranquil land with care. Careful not to stay too long or listen to its humming song. The peace it brings allows a rest for me, this solid pleasure's guest. Though birds do squawk and critters run and clouds do sometimes hide the sun, perfection's world is not for me. Instead, I crave the normalcy. So send me down unto my home so that my shoes no longer roam. Set me down and let me be, so I may sun myself with me. Um, hold on. I feel like I didn't write that. What do you mean? Now I'm wondering if that was like a poem. Need <laughs> <laughs> to check you're not plagiarizing. Yeah, I have to double check that. <laughs> I mean, I think I did. Well, I'll have to double check and take it out if I if I if I find it somewhere. But I'm like, okay. It, if it's still in, listeners, it means Steph did write it. It passed <laughs> the plagiarism test. 
man. I was also taking a poetry class at the time. And I'm like, did I just really love that poem and write it down? Or did I write this? It's right in the middle of my journal entry. So <laughs> we will see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway. Well, thanks for sharing, Steph. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for listening. Bye-bye. I'll see you soon.